Erica Ridley, and welcome to another historical romance unboxing. Today, we have a gorgeous package from author Vanessa Kelly. I love this wrapping paper. The grapes make me think of sharing a glass of wine with one of my favorite romance heroes. Who wouldn't want to do that? What do you say we open it and check out what's inside? Let's read! Chapter 1 Yorkshire, July, 1860. How the hell did he let it become such a disaster? Jack said, pushing aside the ledger. Every time he'd looked at the bloody thing, he'd held out a faint hope that circumstances weren't as bad as they appeared. And every time, he was wrong. The large, leather-clad account book was one of several piled haphazardly before him on the library desk. On the other side of that pile sat Atticus Lindsay, the longtime estate manager at Stonefell, and a truly estimable man. He had to be, because he'd put up with years of financial messes and managed to ameliorate some of the worst effects. But even Lindsay's business acumen and dedication to the family could no longer stave off the inevitable. Thanks to Jack's uncle, the previous Marquess, Stonefell Hall stood at the brink of ruin, and the Easton family fortunes weren't far behind. His estate manager struggled to articulate some positive news and failed. It's all right, Lindsay, Jack finally said. I know we're teetering on the edge of the abyss. The only question now is how to walk ourselves back from it. The middle-aged widower, whose kind face and gentle manner were combined with a whip-smart mind, pulled a grimace. There are a few things we can try, my lord. We can take down the remaining viable timber in the homewood, for one. The income from that would stave off the creditors till the next quarter. Jack hated that idea. So many noble trees had already been lost. Stonefell's woods had once been the finest in this part of Yorkshire, but they were now a pale imitation of their former glory. We'll do that only as a last resort, he said. I'm hoping the harvest will be better this year. The revenues from that should take us well into the next year. Lindsay eyed him. Of course, sir. In other words, good luck with that, you bloody fool. He certainly wouldn't have blamed Lindsay if he'd said those words out loud. Jack had rarely involved himself in estate business, even though he'd known for two years that the Lindale title would fall directly to him. That was when Jack's father heir to his older brother, had died of apoplexy, brought on by a life of drinking in excess. His father had evaded responsibility whenever possible. Even in death he'd run true to form, and had left Jack to pick up the pieces of a family all but in ruins. As for the recently deceased Marquis, well, Uncle Arthur had been a kind man, loyal to family and friend alike, and he'd been more than generous to Jack, always providing him with a safe haven from his warring parents and helping him achieve a military career by purchasing his commission. But as a man of business and a caretaker of the family fortune and legacy, the third Marquis of Lindale had been an absolute disaster. "'I'm sorry, my lord,' Lindsay said in a tone warm with sympathy. "'I wish I had better news to impart, but the tenant farmers are barely holding on as it is. We'll need years of good harvests to make up for the ground we've lost.' Jack repressed the impulse to bang his head on the pile of ledgers. Maybe if he did that long enough, the figures would somehow untangle themselves. He'd spent so many late nights, poring over the damn numbers, searching for even a thread of good news, he could barely see straight. For years he'd tried to escape all the family drama by focusing his energies on his military career. He'd worked his ass off, climbing up the chain of command until serving directly under Wellington himself. And even though the fortunes of war were often bleak, he loved his work. If fate had decreed otherwise, he'd still be in the army. But fate had decreed otherwise. And now he was someone he'd never wanted to be. The Marquis of Lindale. The title had been shared by a disreputable group of aristocrats more known for their spendthrift, rakish lifestyles than for nurturing the blessings graced by God and King. Well... He'd be damned if he was the one to bring the estate crashing down around his mother and sister. They deserved more than that, as did the tenants and staff who worked at Stonefell and in the mansion in London. And he could never forget Leah and Rebecca, who were as much his responsibility as anyone else under his care. Vanessa also sent a book trading card. Very cute. For tall, dark, and royal. 
a bookmark for three weeks with a princess matches the book and another trading card for his mistletoe bride cute and a cover flat for my fair princess looks awesome can't wait to read these Thanks, Vanessa! Thank you for watching Historical Romance Unboxing with Erica Ridley. More information about today's featured book can be found in the text accompanying this video, as well as on my website, ericaridley.com unboxing. To win a signed copy of today's featured book, as well as an autographed romance from my Rogues to Riches series, just leave a comment on this video within 24 hours and you're entered to win. Keep reading and see you next time!